Thank you so much for tuning in. We're gonna be talking about lateral inhibition today. And lateral inhibition is a super important topic in sensation and perception. It's something that deals with kind of uh, one of the most primitive things about, and one of the most crucial things about our visual system, which is edge detection. If you think about what edge detection is, it allows us to know there is a table in front of us. It allows you to know, uh, you know, where, uh, how, how you can read letters and how you can, uh, you know, comprehend where you are in space. So it is a huge part of of our daily life, edge detection. And that comes to us through lateral inhibition, which takes place in the eye. Um, so, what I wanna do in this video is I wanna show you an example of lateral inhibition at work in a visual illusion. I want to talk about the neural explanation for why this happens, and then kind of pull back and look at the broader picture for how this translates into edge detection in our visual world. So, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you this, uh, this, this uh, visual illusion right here. So, if you pause your screen, what you'll see is that, you know, uh, this illusion holds up. Um, what you should be basically seeing is kind of like these flickering dots, right, uh, that are kind of in the corners here. But these dots aren't actually flickering, and you can test that by pausing, you know, th this video and looking around. If you stare at one spot, you'll see that it doesn't really flicker. And if it does, it kind of flickers out of the corner of your eye. You get it best to work whenever you're kind of scanning around this picture. To give you another example, I can show you kind of uh, the inverse of this, where we're looking at um, uh, you know uh, things a little bit differently. And now, instead of seeing the, kind of these uh, black uh, circles, you'll see these kind of uh, black uh, squares show up on these corners. Again, they don't actually exist. It's kind of an illusion that we have. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why exactly this works. And in order to do that, we need to talk about what ganglion cells are. Ganglion cells are uh, a specific kind of cell that are, that are in your retina. So they're all the way in the very back of your eye. Uh, after the rods and after the cones have kind of transduced light into an action potential, they're gonna start firing down on these ganglion cells. So let's take a look at those ganglion cells as a little bit of a review. Uh, we have two different kinds, basically. We have two different kinds of ganglion cells. We have on-off ganglion cells, which are kind of sometimes referred to as uh, excitatory center, inhibitory surround cells, and we have off-on uh, ganglion cells, which are just the opposite of that. They're the inverted version. Uh, and so what this means is that for the on-off cells, uh, if there is activation in the middle of the cell, this cell is going to be active and it's going to shoot out more action potentials. It's going to increase the rate of firing those action potentials. However, if anything lands on the surrounding area of this cell, it's going to withhold some of those action potentials. It's going to fire less frequently now. The off-on inhibitory center uh, uh, cells are the exact opposite, where if they have activation in the center part of it, you'll see that they stop firing as much. But if you have any kind of activation on the surrounding area of it, that cell is gonna fire more frequently. So for the rest of this video, what I really wanna do is just focus on kind of one of these, which is the on-off excitatory center. But keep in mind, this happens throughout the, throughout the retina with all these ganglion cells um, that are both of these different kinds. I'm just gonna simplify it by focusing on this one. So let's look at what happens to the cell as we expose it to light. So here we have this diagram, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you these action potentials that go on. This is very similar to like if you recorded a single cell at a time, this is kind of what you would see. So let's assume that this entire cell is lit up by light. What happens is that we are going to cancel these out. The excitatory center is active, but it is, so is the inhibitory surrounding areas. And so this cell is not gonna be firing any differently. It's just gonna be firing at its base rate level of action potentials. But let's assume now that we just shine some light on the middle part of it, or mostly the middle part of it. And now you can see an excitatory response. So we have many more action potentials that are all firing out. This cell is letting us know that, hey, there's a lot of light that is right in the center area of this cell. Now, let's say that we take out the light completely. There's no light shining on it. Now we're gonna have something that looks a little bit more like that baseline response that we looked at whenever we had the entire cell uh, uh, lit up with light. But now let's assume that we throw some light over on uh, a little bit of the surrounding area of this. And you can kind of see that, uh, you know, there's no action potentials now. This cell has stopped firing because it's letting us know, hey, there's light in the surrounding area of this cell. All right, so let's look at this image right here and you can kind of see what appears to be these edges, 
right? Um, but in fact, there's not actually any edges here. It's just different gradients of, of, uh, of light, uh, moving from dark to less dark as it moves forward. However, what, we, what our eyes detect is actual lines here, and this is lateral inhibition. And the reason why this works is because of the contrast between these two levels of light. Uh, so we have parts of our parts of our retina. Uh, those ganglion cells in our retina are going to be firing; they're having an excitatory response. But the neighboring cells are going to be having an inhibitory response. That kind of juxtaposition, that kind of uh, competing signal, is going to uh, be translated in our brain as edges. So let me give you uh, an example. And and so we're looking at the same thing we just saw, except now I've overlaid several kind of ganglion cells, one on top of another, and you can kind of see them here. This is a little bit more accurate of what's going on in our visual system at the moment. So we have this kind of this beige line. We're going to say this is, this is just some kind of line. If I were to move that line um, over into uh, the, the surrounding areas of this layer of ganglion cells, we're gonna have no response. It's going to not even be a base rate response, it's gonna be an inhibitory response between these. But let's say that I move it a little bit farther. If I move this line a little bit farther and now it's over this area, then we're gonna see an excitatory response across all of these cells. So these cells are now firing, letting us know that, hey, I'm getting some light over in this area. But if I move this line just a little bit farther over to the left once more, now we have not even a baseline response, we have an inhibitory response. Where there's no action potentials or many, many fewer action potentials as a result. And if we move it to the left a little bit more, you guessed it, now we have an excitatory response all over again. So this is something that is going to help us detect edges because we're looking at how these cells that are all kind of next to one another, whenever they have light, Right next to each of them, some of those cells are going to be excitatory, some of them are going to be inhibitory. That kind of contrast that we have, no pun intended, is going to be uh, what we detect as edges. And that's lateral inhibition in a nutshell. Thanks for tuning in.